Hey, welcome back to my channel. Um, in this uh, video, I've recorded a process of me making a needle felted uh, armature doll slash puppet. Um, I use them for like stop motion, um, 3D illustration, so like I build sets and photograph them. Um, and yeah, they're just super fun to make. Um, yeah, so I'll be walking through a bit of the process um, uh, here and there when stuff's interesting because most of the time it's just a lot of uh, stabbing, <laughs> which, um, you know, there's not a lot of explaining that needs to be done. But yeah, um, I'll just walk you through it. So I'm starting off with using um, armature wire, which is like a super flexible uh, form of wire to build like a skeleton in which um, the base of the puppet is sort of built around. It's uh, good for structure, but it's also so you can animate the puppet afterwards or put it in different poses, uh, depending on what you're using it for. Um, so basically you just sort of yeah, build like a mini skeleton for the character. Um, usually you're supposed to like double wrap it so it doesn't snap at any point, but I've never had any issues with um, the wires breaking because uh, I'm not like doing super um, intensive animating with it because um, I'd use a proper like animation skeleton for that um, so yeah the only double layered area is sort of the the spine because that's probably the most um, sort of bent ish areas uh, it needs the most support uh, and then after that I sort of um, build a sort of base sort of structure with um, just regular like stuffing which you use for like pillows or stuffed animals and things like that um, just because uh, needle felting wool if you've ever used it before it doesn't a lot doesn't go very far so you want to build up the bulk of your your character with something else um, so you're not wasting sort of the supply and also it's just easy to get like a base structure down to build upon because um, it's super repetitive and time consuming so if you don't really have a like a structure underneath um, it would take a very long time um, it already takes heaps of time and then from there you just sort of start uh, wrapping the wool or like laying the wool down and literally just stabbing it over and over again with these little uh, needles um, and essentially you're just trying to like create uh, from the fluffy soft texture into like a more firmer form and like the repetitive motion of like stabbing it over and over again slowly like starts to build like a, a structure and a form um, so you just like yeah trying to manipulate it to yeah build the structure that you want so like uh, right now I'm working on Sweet Pea's head uh, which is my cat by the way I'm making a puppet of my cat <laughs> Sweet Pea um, and yeah, I'm just like building it up to get quite chunky and sort of like adding extra bits for like the dimension of her, her facial features and stuff like that. I start with um, a white base just because it's um, cheapest and also uh, you can get caught up in the details if you don't start with something um, a bit more like colourless because you can focus on the form then and you don't get distracted by colours or yeah things like that um so i'll just leave you guys now for a bit and you can just watch me slowly stab this thing over and over um because it's pretty repetitive um, and you can sort of get the idea just by watching there's not much to explain um but yeah just covering the wire and slowly building form and i'll talk to you a bit later when it comes to something a bit more interesting and i have things to explain about it
Uh, if you're interested in giving a go but you don't want to commit to big amounts of um, wool, you can always go to Daiso, which I'm pretty sure is an international thing. Um, and they have like little needle felting kits. Um, it comes with like little instruction on how to make a, a little tiny creature. Um, I'm not sure if the it comes with it comes with like four coloured wools usually. Um, and I think you have to buy the the needles separately and the foam separately, but they're all in like the same section. Uh, and they're like crafty sewing sort of section. Um, so definitely give it a go if you're interested. It's super fun. Um, yeah, or like even building puppets is could be fun as well. Like even if you don't want to use needle felting, try other materials like with armature, armature wire underneath and bring characters to life. It's yeah, super fun. I realised I forgot to add a wire tail, so I'm currently just like adding one in and uh, having to awkwardly sort of like stitch it in place and then needle felting around that. Um, yeah, so next up after all of this is done, um, you get to the fun part, which is adding colour and a bit more dimension. Because you don't want to add too much white, otherwise when you add the colour, it will change its form again. So you got to sort of preemptively create a structure that which is slightly uh, slimmer than the structure you want in the final form, um, because you'll uh, be adding colour on top afterwards, unless your figure's white. Um, and then you don't need to worry, obviously. Um, so yeah. Uh, so this is my final sweet pea base. Yeah, so this is what I'll build the, the structure off using um, this brown wool that I've got because my cat is mostly brown. Um, she's got she's a tortoise shell, so she'll have white patches and orange and um, obviously pink ears and pink paws. But yeah, it's just like oh, and dark brown bits too, as you can see in the photo. Yeah, so you just slowly start to build that up, add the details. You got to be a bit more intentional with the the stabbing at this point because you don't want it to look too beaten up on the outside because this is like your final layer essentially. So you got to be a bit more delicate with the the way you're building the structure and a bit more intentional with uh, the, the stabbing motions. <laughs> Um, I suppose from experience I would say like if you decide to give needle felting a try um, don't be disheartened if nothing sort of takes form straight away it's really time consuming and a lot of trial and error um, this process video obviously is like tiny tiny amount of what I actually did and it's all sped up in like three times speed so it's very time consuming and also um, there were parts where I've like ripped things off or like had to restart stuff um, and also uh, 
be wary of the needles also they're very sharp obviously but um, usually you use a mat and needle felting on I prefer not to but I'm very careful when I'm doing it uh, you can see that I used a mat in some of it when it's like quite thin wool but once it gets thicker it's a bit trickier and a bit easier if you don't use the mat but yeah also the way that you use the needle try not to be too rough with it because they're quite thin and will snap very easily and you yeah you don't want that obviously um you want to be firm but gentle with the needles and beware of their sharpness and look out for your little fingers So I've been adding lots of the details, um, 
lot of CP's beauty marks, uh, the darker brown, little butthole, um, paws, the ginger on her tummy and her, on some of her legs and her, her face. Um, to build up character and make it look more like CP. Um, and this is less about building structure and more about yeah, creating patterns and likeness to my cat. So you don't need a lot of felt for these sorts of, um, the wool for this sorts of part because it's, yeah, it's just about sort of, you've already got the base structure, it's just about adding the details. Uh, so I got introduced um, from needle felting from a class, um, like a free like little needle felting class at an art gallery in Bandura. I went with uh, Tom and we sort of sat down and made some like little pins and I was a little bit obsessed with the way that it worked and I thought it would, um, so I was really into, well, was and still am really into stop motion and I thought the medium would work really well because I was making little clay puppets at the time and it was really hard to like animate um, because the structure's so like rigid but I figured if I could needle felt puppets um, I could animate a lot better um, and for a lot cheaper than creating like silicon moulds and things like that which is what big studios use so yeah that's really my main intention behind uh, getting into it and wanting to start there was a few shorts that really inspired me as well uh, I got to interview um, I got to interview an animation studio um, actually that had just when I was into making the puppets with the needle felting and with the wire armatures inside I got to interview them for a short they were showing at the Melbourne Film Festival of uh, crocheted like armature puppets they had made which was super inspiring too and sort of just like uh, ignited my, my interest in it even more yeah so that's how I really got into it it's super fun very time consuming and kind of labor intensive yeah if it's something you're into you definitely give it a try because it's super fun and rewarding and relaxing because the repetitive motion of stabbing something over and over is yeah very very cathartic yeah very very soothing Now we're going to sculpt Sweepy's eyes uh, and her little pink nose. Um, I'm just using Super Sculpt here and that way um, I decided to make them with clay because I feel like needle felted eyes can look a little bit creepy if they're not done right and I'm not that competent in making realistic needle felted eyes and also my intention behind it um, is with the clay I can make uh, say like eyes, nose and mouth and they've got little pin, I can add like pin backing so then they can be interchangeable which is super good for stop motion because then I don't have to have several puppets or several um, heads of a puppet I can literally just change out the uh, facial features with other facial features to show emotion and expression um, and just makes the doll a lot more versatile uh, using acrylic gouache to paint the Super Sculpey. It's quickly become actually one of my favourite mediums, um, especially for sculpture, um, because it's super matte. It doesn't become, well, thus far that I've noticed, it doesn't become tacky after sitting on the clay for a while. I find that acrylics or um, most other mediums, if you don't seal the clay, and a lot of seals are shiny and reflective, which you don't want if you're making photographed 3D illustrations um, yeah I find a lot of paint gets tacky if it's not sealed um, so yeah the acrylic gouache has been super good for that and yeah so I'm just mixing a bunch of colors and uh, creating her eyes and her little pink nose
So here's the final puppet, my mini sweet pea. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you like process videos like this where it's more uh, just watching the art happen and left uh, lifestyle sort of stuff, let me know. They're a bit more intensive to create, but I really enjoy watching the process of creating uh, something from nothing. Um, so if you're into that, let me know. And like the video and subscribe. Um, I'm hoping to get a bit more on top of making videos. So hopefully you'll be seeing more of me.